caddis. And uh, the Mother's Day caddis is uh, the American grand uh caddis. It's um, a 16, 14 uh, size caddis, dark body. Um, there are other grand species. That grand is the, the genus name. Uh, but this one hatches in such a uh, profound mass numbers it looks like there are mats of caddis flies some of some of you may have seen it uh mats of caddis flies on the water and if the water's not too high up in runoff it is as good a time as any to go out and fish these uh the dry fly to pods of fish and so um i'm gonna I thought we'd tie tonight a cased caddis, which is the American Grand on builds like a stick case. Um, and then we would tie a, a merger, like a soft hackle. Um, we can tie an egg laying caddis and we can tie an X caddis dry fly. Excellent. Sound, sound good? Very good. Awesome. So I bought some materials. Well, do a 16, you can use black or um, olive thread, whatever you'd like. Um, here we go. Did you use an 8 uh, uh, gauge? Yeah, your 8-odd is what I, I would use on okay. this here. I'll give you some 8-odd right here. Okay. Okay. Six. You can use brown, you can use black. I'm just going to use olive because that's what I got loaded up. Thank you. Yeah. What do you need? You got some? You got olive? Olive. Um, and then, uh, let's see, let's start with uh, a bead. And a uh, we'll still use a, a dry fly hook, a long shanked dry fly hook. Um, you can tie this in an 18 to, to, to 14. Uh, I think the 18 hooks are too small for this though. And so um, here, uh, take a hook out of here, take a bead, pass it around. We'll do a real simple, um, real simple case caddis pattern that I use. The black bead is the um, the black bead is the head. We we'll use a little uh, crystal, um, sorry, ice stub in the middle. Ideally, this is just a shade too dark. I like it. I, I like it a little uh, brighter. Uh, what they call caddis candy apple green. Sometimes you hear, but this will work. Okay, I like it. I'm getting to the point where I need those I things. I don't care too. what y'all say. I'm not saying nothing. I think you look delightful. <laughs> and then we'll use a little pheasant tail in here as well as for the for the, the case. Oh. Let me see what color I got here that'll work best for us. Okay. I'm gonna take off pretty soon, young. Yep. If you can just leave the camera and feel free to move it around. Alright, we will do. Thank you, Dan, for everything. Yep. Thank sure. you. Have a great time, guys. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Here we'll use a medium olive on this one. So, um, mm. I just need one of those hooks and one of those okay. things and we'll, we'll tie a case caddis to start with. Um, a little, uh, 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 here, hand me one of those beads. Uh, a little of the, um, of the, uh, 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 grab a little piece of copper wire too, just to kind of hold it all together. Thank you so much. Here, let me do this. Right. That'll be perfect. Okay. <laughs> you want a bead? You got a bead? I'm gonna need okay. one. Who needs? Uh, I'll, I'll walk over and give him the. Okay, hold on. That'll be my, now mine. Now it's gone? Of, yeah, it's yeah. part of the. Here. Thank you. Uh, I got two now. Okay. So let's see if I can drop another one. <laughs> I'll never find that out. I know. The, the black ones are like, I was like, oh, that's brilliant marketing. Okay. I'm gonna cheat and use my horses. Okay, once you get that on, we'll just get our thread started with uh, some starting wraps there. This is why we don't like to give you the materials right away because you're usually way ahead of us at this mm -hmm. point. Like, we're still trying to get this. <laughs> well, just tell me to slow down, Dave. We're old friends now. Uh, 
That was pretty good. You got that one back. <laughs> I got another one here. Yeah. Here. Do you want to put it in there? Man. I'm stupid. You did it. You're sure. a better person than I am. Uh, I th oh, I, damn it. Now it just fell off. So. I had a pair of table stats in here. I can't even see them right now. Oh, there they are. Good. Oh, did you get some more? If anybody needs hemo stats, here they are. Okay. So I had five dozen olive hair's ears the other day. Oh my goodness. done with that? Hey, what's up? Well, I forgot your name. Mike. Mike Yawn. Yawn. Yeah, I did. Yeah. This is uh, well, Michael. He, he and I met at uh, Mr. Reiner's place. The other day, we're tying uh, case caddis uh, to meet the American Grand Am. Well, good. I came to uh, be inspired <laughs> and to possibly find the truth. <laughs> so if you can provide that, um, <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, I'm just gonna get it started here. Which chair is this here? That, Nobody's. No one's. You want a vice? You want a tie? You want to? No, I'm, I'm gonna hang out. Reserved here for a yep. while. I don't have my spectacles. I was up in Tom Minor. I was just coming back and remembered this. Sweet. Well, I'm glad you stopped by. It's good yeah, to see you again. Good to be here. Good to be seen. I understand this some of the finest tires in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> um, After the most that aspire to. to. <laughs> That's hilarious. Once you kind of get your um, once you get your uh, hook in the vise with the bead. Uh, I'm just going to pull off a little bit of copper wire. And the only reason I do this is to preserve the the pheasant tail stuff. So you can pass that on down to everybody. They can take it. You got I, some? I, I cut. All right, thanks. Um, I'm just going to tie it in. And then if I'll show you how to, I pull off fibers off a of pheasant tail as well. Like so I'm just going to tie it in all the way up. Nothing, nothing fancy, just get it on there because all it is is holding the, the a fish will take a pheasant uh, tail and if it doesn't have a ribbon it'll just tear it to shreds which might make it work a little even better some people might say but um real easy all you do is take your fibers pull them 90 degrees from the stem like this right take them um, in, th in this case we're going to use probably three to you know use five fibers like this this way the tips all align you see that Mm -hmm. Right, and then just hold it tight, give it a rip off. Right now, do you want the bead all the way up at the eye or yep. a little bit back? All the way up at the eye, okay. That represents the head of the peaking caddis. Okay, do you, uh, do you tie in the head behind that, that uh, bead to keep it from moving around? Or nah, we'll get just there. yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, well, as we move, work up back up, and uh, the eye of the hook should be big enough to that you can get it in there. So, I'm just gonna pinch. Like this. Okay, I lay it on the side and then and then I allow the thread tension to haul the, the fibers up onto the top. Just like this. Here we go. And in the end, you should have them kind of popping up there like that. I'm just gonna build a little bit of a body here with some thread wraps and a base. So I'm just gonna wrap these pheasant uh, tail fibers. So everybody got some yet? Okay, we're looking for just a, doesn't have to be a big taper, but it looks like, how many of you seen a case caddis on the rocks, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's what, so there's no tail on this or anything. 
But we're tying in the tips of the feather back Correct. at the bend of the hook. Back at the bend of the hook, right? And we're going to work forward till we're going to leave about two mils, three mils gap between the thread and the um, the bead because we're going to, that's the peaking part of it, right? It's peaking out of his case. Okay. So maybe like two eyes? Yeah. Two eyes being Yeah. Like And when you're when you get there, when you get that tied in, I'll I'll do the next step here. Okay, I'm going slow here. That's so. all right. It's not a race, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and your wire, how do you tie that? Do you uh, have to? Uh, you just wrap that in. Yep. And some people, there's a couple of tricks here. Some people will wrap the pheasant tail around the thread. Some people will wrap it around the, the traditional way by Frank Sawyer when he made the, the pheasant tail nymph was he wrapped the pheasant tails around the copper wire. Huh. What I do is I wrap, I wrap the pheasant tails and then I wrap the, the copper wire over the top of it. Would you like some red wine? There's cold beer oh, over there too. Gosh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. So, when I, so I got my copper wire out here. I got my pheasant tails off the top, and now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wrap these just real nice and easy toward the front. I'm, I want to build a body up that looks like a stick case. And I'm just moving it forward, right? And it's kind of trumpeting, getting a little bit bigger as we move up toward the, the thread. This. This is something that I would fish on the bottom. And then I, above it, I would probably put a soft hackle which will tie it at night too as well. I'm just gonna tie it off. You see how it's just kind of, the tips are all kind of pointing off in one direction typically. Like that. I'm gonna give it a snip. Here is our case. To reinforce this case, right? I'm gonna just take this copper wire and I'm gonna reverse wrap it up. Uh, my general rule is if I wrap forward with the material I wrap I reverse wrap with with the reinforcement so I got I, I have the candy apple green Caddis ice dub at home. I did not bring it. I don't know why I didn't bring it. I don't have an excuse <laughs> But I do have some peacock which will work But again, I do like it lighter and more green because the the American Grand Am has a very kind of chartreuse lime green color as a little maggot Trying to do the wire like tight loops or no, like segments? No, just just I, all it is is all it really is doing on this fly is it's not looking like a segmented uh, a segmented uh, body. It's just holding the okay. the stuff on there. I, I'll take a pinch of this. I actually might try to mix it with this over here just to lighten it up and green it up a little bit. Let's see how well it works with. But I, I thought I had the, the candy apple green stuff with me today, and I, when I went in to pull stuff out for the class tonight, I was shocked not to see it in there. I'm shocked there's anything you don't have. <laughs> On you. <laughs> right. And I was just like, God, gosh darn it. I, I used more colorful language, but as is my nature. Um, so... If you ever get the chance, go pick up one of those little case caddis and just squeeze it and you'll see the little, the little maggot pop out, the little larvae, pupae, and uh, take a look at them. 
uh, when the when this fly gets ready to hatch, it's not going to look great. Um, a real chartreuse in there, or what they call candy apple caddis, looks great. Um, it really pops. What if you just do it with some thread? Like you, you could. could you you like could do that. that yeah. I like it because this stuff kind of comes out like this, right? And again, we have a pretty static fly. And so a little bit of this goes a long way, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just dub a little body on there. We can pass this around. Once in a while, what I'll do is I'll take a buy it, a couple buy it's and tie them in and then fold over the tips so they look like little arms coming out, right? And uh, let's come in here and dub this up like this as like a, a little guy coming out of his case. And this is your rudimentary peeking caddis right here. I'm going to put in a couple legs just to show you that too. So is this good to fish during the hatch? Or I would fish it like in the days preceding the hatch as it's coming on because there, what happens with the, with the Grand Om is it climbs up on top of a rock and you'll see the rocks will just be loaded with them right under the surface of the water, right? Mm -hmm. And then they, they just get swept downstream off the top of the rock. The fish, you know, if you find the spot, your your kind of your structure, and the fish that are in that structure will be like pegging things off as it comes down. As the hatch progresses over time, like I almost always go to um, a dry dropper rig with the two other flies we'll tie tonight. But um, let me just pull out a. Yeah, like what I would do is like. Uh, take a buy it right like this and just uh, tie it in a couple of them in for like two little legs and I'll, and I'll pass this around in a second so the tip pointing toward the, the top and you're just tying in the tips here there's one Two, it looks like little horns at first, but then as you fold them back on themselves, there go. they look like legs. Like this, then I put my dubbing on. Like this, I start in. Now they're too, now they're too long, but I snip these ends off. I just fold back them like this, and they look like little arms. Those are too long. So this is after you dubbed a collar behind the bead. Yep. You tie the biots and tips forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, I some I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm just trim off there so they look a little bit more realistic. They look like little legs coming out. I guess in a perfect world, in an anatomically correct world, there'd be six of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the world I want to live in. <laughs> I usually put two on if I'm feeling ambitious, three, and then uh, just kind of come in and like this. Not dub that well. Like this, one, two, three, four, and then I just tie it off, and there's your peeking caddis. Simple, dirty. It's uh, it's got a tungsten bead, so it'll get down in the water column relatively quickly. And like I said, if that's candy apple green, it shows up real bright. I'll pass that around. You can see the little legs on there. Do you ever fish it later in the season? Yeah, I mean, I mean the peaking the peaking caddis is a pretty common, uh, but yeah, but any place that there's case caddis, I would I would consider fishing it. It's quick, dirty, it goes down like a rock. What you use for the horn or the legs? Right? I use uh, biots, but some people use um, little pieces of crystal flash. 
Uh-huh. You can use whatever, just so it looks like they got little legs coming out. Because it looks like he's crawling out, right? And the reason I like to fish this during the Mother's Day caddis is that in the week preceding the emergence, they're up on top of the rocks, they're getting blown off, and it's like um, going to a party, and they have like that crock pot full of cocktail weenies, right? <laughs> that's, that's right. And that's all you can just want. Like that, it's yeah. just like that. It's, uh, it's all you want to eat, right? <laughs> Yeah. Because that's what, you know, it's just sitting there and it's got your attention. And there's a lot of them early in the party. Good. Um, so that, that's the peaking caddis. And, and his legs are short. Yeah, his legs are too short. I, 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 muck, I muck those up. But, um, but uh, I tied these by the, by the dozen for this shop. I, they used to sell quite a few of them. And uh, I think it works pretty well. Especially, and especially again, I apologize for not having the candy apple green Let's iced go, up. Let's go, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, I, that, it, it sparkles, and, and I tell you what, the, if you brush it out a little bit, those, those things move like this, especially in the, in the smoother water. I mean, like, I find these case caddis even in the spring creeks. Right? And that doesn't, it, to be honest with you, it's not that far from a Pertagon nymph either. Right. Right? I mean, it's really a stone skip away. They would just use thread for the Pertagon nymph. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all it is. And that's, and that's the Peking Caddis. And it's actually a pretty close imitation to the, uh, to the American Granom that we see. You could probably find American Granoms right now on the rocks down there underneath them. There won't be like, like literally the, like it'll be a rock this size and it'll be, the top will be completely covered with Granoms. They look like little, like green Helgramite. Yeah, yeah, small though, small. Oh, Helgramite's small. like that, yeah, like, like small, big. like 16. And like a little like rock case. I mean, yeah, yeah. I've seen somewhere Yeah. It's almost like a little funnel. Yeah. 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 You flip over the rocks. You're calling them oh. Granoms? Yeah, the American Granom. Like Granom is the genus name. Right? That's what they're known around the country as is Granoms. Here we call them the Mother's Day Caddis because they come off near Mother's Day. Okay. It's col so, colloquial yeah, name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, tons in Maine, right? Yeah. Rock builders, they break them up by like the materials that they use. Species are like specific to the kind of material they use for their case. Stick builders. There's a Rikophilia, which is the free living cat, builds a net and literally sains the water for its food. Hmm. Wow. The green rock worm is what it normally goes by. Jesus. Yeah. I used to fish a lot of them, Arachophilia out east, yeah. olive caddis, yeah. I'd love to walk to Yellowstone with somebody that really oh understands God. the lifestyle. There's a lot of it. There's so and much to you it. You could go and get a rock. What is this? Yeah, thing? yeah. You know, right there. Yeah. I could get you like halfway there. I can't get yeah, you the I full way there. Half. Yeah, yeah. I, that'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. Um, the next one will take a 16 dry fly hook again, and we're gonna tie uh, what uh, what I see as the. I mean, to me, I catch more fish on the the peacock soft hackle, and I just added one tweak myself to it, and that's I use the chartreuse wire. So you use the chartreuse wire, right? And it gives it the hint of that like that lime. Caddisy green on a black background, which its back is pretty dark. Oh, I see. So the other one you can do is go online, go online and just type in image of American Granom. And I'll show you pictures of the bug. Google. Is that G R A N O M? N N O M. Two N's. Latin. Good. So, it's just gonna get a bead or not? Nope. Okay. Although, although you can put a black bead on this, my recommendation would be just put the black bead in the thorax, and then put the soft tackle in front of it. Do you need another hook? No, I got one. Um, so this one is l largely unweighted, right? And so. I fish this as a as a dropper behind the X caddis, which we'll tie in just a few minutes. Okay, so like 16 to 18 inches behind it, and it looks like a a drowned one. And then we're gonna 
We're gonna take this one evolutionary step forward and we're gonna put a wing on it and another soft tackle on it. And, um, and we're going to make it an egg laying drowned caddis. Mm -hmm. And I stole that pattern from Kelly Gallup over in, in um, the slide, at the slide in on the mess. Credit where credit is due, right? <laughs> And it's good, but let's tie this one because this is the inner. This is the kind of the, like show you how to how to build it. Put your dry fly hook in. Um, you can also use the curved nymph hook. I think a curved nymph hook on a on a soft tackle looks fantastic. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna come back here. There's some. Um, let's pass some of this this around. We're just gonna take some uh, peacock curl, uh, three strands or whatever, you know. You so we're going back to the, to the bend. Yeah, come back to the bend and we'll build it straight forward. Okay. And so and just line the tips up as best you can, and then we'll snip it so you have a nice easy tie-in spot. Like this. I'm sorry, how many pieces? Uh three, four. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna put I'm gonna use four. Just get them as loosely lined up as you can like this and then just go like this. Now, now they're all lined up, right? <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah, perfect. And then what I do is I just kind of choke up on it a little bit. Sometimes I... So we don't have to put the chartreuse wire in yet? Oh yeah, we do. Let's take some chartreuse wire first, okay. please. Yeah. I just bought this today. And I was sitting there looking right at the chartreuse ice stuff, and I said, ooh, I have that in my bag. Who has the wire and Um, So Dan Bailey's and Hatch Finders are the two um, purveyors of fly tying material in, in the community. So uh, I'm just gonna quick put this in here, and you can use this to build body as well. Little, uh, but leave, leave yourself two eye lengths at the front to tie in your soft tackle. I got some over here. Thank, Thank you, you, Patty. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I love these soft tackle flies. I fish them all the time. I particularly do well with them on in Slough Creek on the park in that slow, greasy water, and it um, <clears throat> almost they almost always. Ignore the dry fly and eat the soft tackle. Almost always. <clears throat> okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is real simple. Um, yeah. Again, I tie the wire in later. You can wrap this around the thread when you get it on here to give it a little bit more sturdy uh, grip. But what I do is I get it on and then loosely spiral up and come back down and lash it all down. Especially up at the top, I'm kind of making a taper of the fly. I'm gonna to come to the back like this. Okay, just like that. So I have chartreuse wire underneath it, right? Uh -huh. I have three or four strands of, of uh, peacock curl, right? And then uh, what I'll do is I'll just give it a little spin, like this. To make a rope out of it. Like this, and just wrap it. Oop. So you've already wrapped it to the back, and now you're wrapping it forward. Right. With the, not the wire though. No, not the wire. I always put the wire in last. Yeah. I want the wire to be seen on this fly, so I don't want to hide it in the in the rope. I'm just going to come around. And I'm just going to make some nice little body here. And if I did my thread correctly, it'll just naturally taper as I go up, just like this. Okay. I'm going to lash that down, just like that. <clears throat> Should break here if you want these ones? No, I just escaped. Yeah. So just 
Sorry, dumb question, but if you said, if I did my thread, did you yeah. build a taper underneath? There? I did, I did. So like, for me, this is how I do it, right? My first one, I go all the way down, I tie in my wire, I come all the way back up, I go halfway down, back up, all the way back down, then tie in. So that front end is like a little bit stepped up. Now you tell us that. Uh, <laughs> come on, say it. Session four, we ought to know. I, I won't. I won't say, say it. it. You come are on. correct. Come on. Session <laughs> four, we should know that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care to repeat myself. Okay, I've wrapped it forward. Good. And I tie it off. Lash it off. Right. This uh, this little um, I, I like oversized soft tackles. I, I've gotten some criticism in the constructive criticism that maybe it sometimes they're too big, but um, this uh, but this uh, this Han was killed by a falcon of a friend of, a friend of mine's a falconer, and, and uh, he killed this thing. His falcon killed this thing right in front of us. Cool. Yeah, I know. I love it. I think the feathers, man. I know. I told, I told him right away. I was like, <laughs> I want the feathers. Here you go. Pass, can you pass those down for me, Mike? Thanks. Here's some coming down your guys' way. And I'll show you a little trick with soft tackles because I've been tying a lot with soft tackles lately. And so, like, I told you before that I get, I've, I've received some feedback uh, that, like, sometimes I – Mine are kind of big. I like them big. I like the way that looks, looks like a spay fly to me, and I think that's cool. Um, and I don't think there's any difference in how they work, but um, if when I go back and look at like how some professional tires tie with soft tackles, I'm like, okay, theirs are smaller. Okay. And those are typically the British tires that invented the pattern. They call it a spider. I like the way an oversized hackle ensconces the body. I do too. It makes it look so uh, exotic and mineral like or yeah. bug like. Yeah, yeah like especially with caddis flies. They have long yeah. horns coming off them and everything yeah, else. Awesome. So Is I love there? that. All right, so have we got our bodies made? Oh. Trim off the excess. And then reverse wrap with the chartreuse wire. And wait till you see how this looks when you when you get it on there. It looks great. And it gives it that candy apple caddis color that that um that that fly actually is. Good. Right, you can helicopter. Here's a little trick. You know, you guys have seen the helicopter move? Mm -mm. Just make circles with the the wire after you've got it lashed down, and it'll pop right off for you. And we get to the soft tackle part. So this is, I would call this a guide fly because it's really not a lot to it. You can crank out tons of them in a short amount of time and it works great. Okay, now when you get the, the, the wire, do you, do you tie it in mm. with the, the thread or you just do no, it tight? No, no, uh, tie it in with the thread. Okay. Yep. Okay, dog. Happens to the best of us. You see how that chartreuse wire looks against that, that dark body? Nice. That that chartreuse is what the underside of the granom looks like. It's this, they call it candy apple green or like really bright green. It's not olive at all. The other reason I like those curved wet fly hooks for these because it gives them like a bent bent body, and if you look at anything mm. swimming up, it looks oh, a little yeah, yeah, a little curved to it. And so we'll tie the next one on a curved a curved mm. hook because. We're gonna put an egg sac on it, we're gonna put a wing on it, and then we're, we're gonna put this fly with an egg sac and, and a wing on it.
Good. How are we all doing? You got it? There you go. All right. So take your, take your soft tackle, right? Grab it by the tip and strip off all that fluffy stuff on the bottom. Get it out of there. You don't want it anywhere near your fly. Let's see, I need one. Thank you. There you go. You can have that one. Take the fluffy stuff off. Okay, so look. Here's one with the fluffy on there, right? Yeah. You see all that? That's yeah. called phyla plume. And so you're just going to pull that off, right? Okay. Strip it off. Okay. And then you're going to be left with like, a, a, I don't have much of a stalk, but you'll have a stalk, a rachis, and then you'll have your feathers. Grab it by the tip and gently stroke these fibers backwards so they're sticking out from the side. I'm doing this without my glasses, which is a feat unto itself these days. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Like this, so, so this is what it kind of ends up looking like. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah, very good, very good. So this is our tie-in point right here. We're gonna face it toward the eye. Or put, I put it underneath the eye, I kind of angle it, and then I bring my thread right over. You can see how it's captured it and kinked it a little bit. I just hold it in with a couple wraps, like this. I like, to, I like to bend them back a little bit and come back at them, like this. So the stem is not towards the eye? No, it's the gonna little... be cupped, it's gonna be cupped and the tip is gonna be toward the eye. Okay, the, got it. Right, so my stem is back here. I got it. Okay? Yeah. I'm just gonna take this little, these nose hairs out, like that. And then, um, I got a new uh, hackle pliers, I think it's awesome. Whoa, look yeah. at that. Yeah, the ones that are I think electricians I use it. Every guy. Yep. Electric electricians use these things to like hang out hang from wires when they're putting stuff together. Mm, well, we did. Yeah. But it, it holds pretty well. I've always used the French ones to with great success, but I thought I'd try this one and I'm just gonna make two or three wraps around it, right? And every time I come around, I'm just gonna wet my fingers and stroke back the fibers. Like this. There's one. Here's two. I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna tie it off right here. Just like this with two wraps. I'm gonna snip this out and I'll show you how to just do the house cleaning on this fly. Like this, it's kind of going everywhere. Now's when you kind of kind of start to like, just kind of push it back a little bit. I stroke them back and then I make my head right above it. Wraps going back however many sizes you want, like that. And then it sits there nice and pretty. During the, the hatch, I probably have a dozen of those in my box it's because- a deadly, deadly pattern. It is, and in size 20, it works great as a BWO too. Oh. The hard part is finding hackles that size. Yeah, I couldn't, I don't have anything that would work. And then I just, uh, I'm just gonna finish this off. This goes behind my dry fly, 18 inches, 16 inches. And I would say that 70% of the fish I catch on the Mother's Day caddis hatches on this fly. So three wraps with your hackle, and then tie, up, tie it off, and then go to the front and tie on the head. Yep, and so what you wanna do is stroke back those fibers. You, Dave, did you see how I, put, I physically pushed them back, stroked them back like you're, you're petting the dog? Okay. Like this? Yeah. And then I just kind of go like this, and now my all I got is left is where I'm going to tie my head, and it's right there. And then when you get it, you can just kind of adjust the fibers around it, and uh, there you go. Mm. This little bugger is deadly, and I think it's deadly at other times of the year, <clears throat> aside from the granum. So in the caddis life cycle, it goes through, right? This is the pupating, this is the pupating bug. I mean, it's gone from, it's gone through one metamorphosis and is starting to swim to the surface. Now, caddis are swimmers, man, and they swim aggressively. That's why 
fish smash them. Like, have you ever heard of like a splashy caddis rise? Mm -hmm. Right? It's because they're constantly chasing them. Oversized, though. I love them because they look like spay flies, but yeah. Yeah. I mean like hey, it's just personal preference I don't right. quite frankly. I have yet to been someone has yet to show me objective information that shorter ones work as <laughs> yes. good or right. or better yeah. And or longer ones are worse. I, so I'm neutral on the topic This is just how I time them. That's because I like the way they look. It's not like you're gonna get rejected each time you, if Let me tell you some caddis caddis pupae are swimming so fast that fish are just slashing at them yeah, I've seen I've seen brown trout in pools rolling around like pigs in a sty eating caddis flies underneath and on the surface. I mean like literally rolling. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm dead serious. I can't wait for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen it uh, in the park too on that green drake. It's, that's another one where it doesn't. And that in a size 10 would probably work just well for the green drake coming up as well. I mean, that's an old, old pattern, probably over 150 years old. 1800s was written about by Dame Juliana in England, mm -hmm. Victorian area, era, sorry. Did you have pro prolific caddis hatches here? We have the Mother's Day caddis, and then we have what they call the spotted sedge, which is the hydropisci. And so I see it, thank you, on in uh, July evenings around the lights, especially around Loch Laven area, I've seen just giant clouds of them. But the, the most significant one we have is the Mother's Day caddis. And then it looks like pizza boxes, mm -hmm. like in the eddies. I mean, it's just yeah. like this big, like a big large roses pizza of yeah. like caddis flies spinning around in an eddy, and all of a sudden you just see a head come out in the middle yeah. of it. I and, live a few blocks away from the river, and I can tell in my backyard it's just like crazy. Yeah, caddis. right. Yeah. And they're on the garage yeah. and they're underneath yeah. every light, and yeah. uh, so <clears throat> we'll do we'll do dry fly last. Uh, so caddis, they come, they emerge, they sit in the film, unlike a uh, mayfly, which sits on the surface. They're right in the film, okay? And that's why a caddis emerger works so well greased in the surface. We can do a bubble back emerger tonight if you want. We've already done that. We've tied the, um, what is it, the, uh, not the film critic, uh, whatever, whatever it was, the capture done. You make that bubble and then you put a shock of deer hair over the top of it. The X caddis sits flush on the surface, unlike the elk hair caddis, which is really great for skittering. But like during the hatch, those things are in the right in the surface film. And so uh, then they fly off, they go into a mating swarm, and then they come back and deposit their eggs. And one of, a pattern that I've really come to like is an egg-laying caddis. So it's got an egg on its bum. It's the same fly we just tied. And it's got its wings, which, because it's gone through full metamorphosis, it now has kind of crystalline wings hmm. underneath the soft tackle. So let's tie one of those. Yeah, and does the caddis hatch start down low and then proceed into the valley? That is a generalization that is uh, true of most hatches, that they start lower on the river and then they work up to the higher end of the river as time goes on. That may be the course of three or four days. Like how low? Where? I have no idea. I, like I'm, I don't even leave the valley when it's going on here, so I don't. I just get on where I can. Mm -hmm. I really like that Pine Creek to. Oh, yeah. yeah, Pine to to Carter's. Yeah, yeah I, I like that section because you can, if you had to, you could do it in three hours, um, two hours if you push through, and uh, or you can spend the entire night there. It's up to you. Um, so same thing. We're gonna we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tie this. Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of um, of the chartreuse wire or copper wire. It doesn't matter at this point. It's re I like the chartreuse for the wet fly. This is a wet fly as well, but um, because it's a little bit older in the stage, it's those. It, as you know, if you've seen if you've seen this caddis fly here, you know that it's a dark bodied caddis fly, right? I just don't want my, I want to use my fly more than once. 
And I specific, specifically, if I'm out at dusk and I don't want to have to tie on another fly because chances are I may not be able to be like. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you, brother. That's, yep. That's never happened. Okay. <laughs> Uh, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass some of this stuff around, and we're gonna use this as our egg sack. So we're gonna go we're gonna go back to right where. Oh, are you guys taking the curved hooks this time around, or oh. straight? Oh, oh. Well, well, it's all right. It's all right. It doesn't matter. I'm not tying with one at all. But I hope you guys are laying your thread down properly. One wrap after the other. So we're just gonna take a small amount, and we're gonna so yeah, get your. Gonna get graded. Yeah, <laughs> the fish are the uh, judges. That's right. I'm just, I'm it's just, I'm just passing through this time and place. <laughs> uh, so this this nice little light lime colored thing kind of looks like an egg, and you'll see them when they come back. They'll have that little grayish lime egg on their butt, right? I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. I'm gonna build a small bulb at the end of the fly, just to start off with. First thing we do after we get our thread on, I just go in here and I just make a little bulb. Just like this. Good. Just like that. You can make it a little bigger, you can make it a little, you wouldn't want to make it much smaller, you want it to be seen. And especially at night, in the evening, this is when the egg layers typically come back to the river. Say, oh, say that again. You dub your. Uh, there we go. You dub with this material. Yep. To make the Just like look at that little ball on the back there. Oh, okay. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You haven't put any wire on though. Not yet. All right. Cool. After the ball, we'll put in some wire. Okay. Copper, a chartreuse. I don't think it matters, but well, whatever's in front of you, right? Okay, now we're gonna build that body. After we tie in the wire, I'm gonna go all the way up. This is how I build the body with thread, okay? And it also builds, um, because I'm tying in that wire all the way up to the tip, right? I'm gonna come back down, I'm gonna go halfway. I'm gonna reverse directions and go back up toward the eye. One wrap right next to the other. And then I'm gonna come down. You can go even split that, that front half and half and do a quarter and then all the way down. And that'll build a nice little, if you lay every wrap next to each other, it builds a little bit of a taper. Can you all see that on there? No, it's, pre it's pretty darn yeah. hard to see the background, et cetera. And it's not, it doesn't seem to be in focus. Yep, so, so basically what I have is in the front quarter of that I have five layers of wraps, then I have three layers of wraps, then I have one layer of wraps. Make sense? Mm hmm So. same thing and tie the peacock in right in front of the little egg sack yep right and so like look here's my wire my egg sack my wire now the peacock goes in and I'm just gonna put that in and spiral it up to the, the front and just get it all lashed down nice and neat come back down you can build a little take the opportunity to build a little bit of a taper if you'd like if you're so inclined and then here's the key to this to making this look real good is come right back to that bulb, right on the edge of that bulb, so it's oh, there's no <laughs> gaps. <all right? laughs> yep. Fish would notice a gap and refuse it completely. I'd have to look at myself in the mirror, Michael. Rejected. Rejected. I yeah. knew it. I knew it. There's that gap. There's that gap. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so leave yourself two to three little eye links at the front because we're gonna tie in a wing. It's gonna go gobble up a little bit more space. Good, we're all tied in. I'm just gonna- We're, we're getting there. Okay, I'm just gonna wrap this up forward. Nice and easy. Come behind it with some copper wire. Okay, like so. I always have a few of these in there. I have more though. I have more of just the straight peacock ones, okay? But a few of these for the nighttime, should you get into a flight of egg layers. Typically happens at the end of the hatch as the hatch progresses over a few days, right? Because they've had their time to go out and swarm and mate, and now they're coming back with those eggs. They're gonna deposit them on the water, they're gonna go down through the water column, and then they're going to, um, get lodged in the rocks and they're gonna hatch out as new Mother's Day caddis. Even if the flow is 30,000, right? Or 61,000 is when, when it broke. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be really interesting to see because, right, there are two, two kind of things that live on the substrate that could be severely impacted by a flood. One I would say would be eggs from the spawning rainbows from that season. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one would be aquatic uh, insect life. Yeah. Dramatic. Scouring, redepositing of silt on the say gravel where there were eggs. Is there water survey or Water speculation as to what it's looking like this year, as far as the way things are warming. So I, I spoke with a Clay Herbs, who's the under sheriff in the area, and he he they're they're concerned about some properties up the valley that were did go in the river last year, but the banks have been eroded to the point where they're now kind of more at risk than they've ever been. You know, once you get above Yankee Jim up there. Mm. Oh, I think it's going to be big water this year. There's a lot of it snow up there. It that way, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think we're all a little yeah, from last year. Yeah, the something about... How many, how many wraps of pearl have you done just up and back? Yeah, just no, just up, uh -huh. tie it off, Dave. Tie it off. Yeah. And okay. two eye links back tie I off. want two eye links because we're going to tie in now okay. some wings. We're going to use but this then, material wrap here. a wire. Forward. Yeah, wrap your wire forward just to protect your hurl. That's yeah. all that is. Oh, okay. And so, um, I was down there talking to Rob uh, Laren. Do you know Rob Laren down there? We'll use some of this stuff to for the wing. Look at this. Is that a Z-Lon? It's, um, I don't know if it's Z-Lon or not, but that, that over there is, a, is just plain uh, a yarn. Oh, God. They call that widow's web. Oh, we're, nice. So we're going to take a small rope of it, a small rope, something that's not overly much. Like, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to go in here and take about well, that this much, right? That might even be too much. Let's see. These are going to be our wings underneath. We want them to be our wings underneath. Like this. I'm gonna square it off. It's fine. I come up this way. Okay. You see this? Barely. It's barely. Okay. You see that? Not a lot. I'll pass it around. Just clip a little bit off. Light dressing on this. All right. This is my one of my complaints about commercial t uh, flies is that they're overly dressed. They're heavily, overly heavily dressed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go nice and light on this. Right. Like this, I'm gonna lay it on top. That's even a little too much. Um, let's take a couple out there. Hmm. I'm gonna lay it straight across the top. You see that? Just there. I'm gonna put two wraps on there just to hold it in place. One, two, three. All right, three wraps. Right, right on top. 
You see that? Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to pivot them like this. And wrap it again. Two, three, four. Okay? And then I can split them like two wings. I can trim them to the length I want, which I'm going to put out right about there. And right about there. Come around and take a look at how these wings laid out. Just a tiny bit. I don't want a lot in there, right? I, it, it, this, one could, this one could backfire on you. I'm going to go back. It's about there. That's a little short. I'll make it work. Good. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Let's see, can I put it on there? And how do you split those wings? Or how do you so if, when, you, when you go like this, when you lay it across, mm -hmm. and then I just pivot it like that, and then I just, or I kind of hold it and I just wrap it around. Okay, so you and, fold back the forward part. Correct. To make it. And it'll naturally stay like that. And I went in there and I actually trimmed a little bit with uh, uh, some of the, what I, what I affectionately refer to as nose hairs in there. You going with about a shank length? About a shank length. I wouldn't go any shorter. I cut one side too short on this one. But, um, cause you know, like if you look at, um, Caddis wings, they're a lot more like moth wings than mayfly wings. Yeah. Here, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Just two, two, yeah. three lashes to get it laying across the top. Mm -hmm. And then just fold that one side and pull the other side around and then three more to kind of hold it in place. You can figure eight this, I guess, if you wanted to. I don't know if it's necessary or not. Yeah, I can just cut that one side and too short. Length, Gosh darn it. You want the length of the wings to the back to the egg side? Yeah. So I I have about an eye and a half of in front of the wing between the eye. Mm-hmm. That's about where I'm at too. Oh, okay. An eye. Okay. Yeah, take a look. All right. And then just build a head up there. Well, no, we're gonna we're gonna put a soft tackle on. Oh, oh we're still going. We're going. <laughs> still going. All right. All right. You guys got enough soft tackle material, or I no. can pull some more out here. Need some more. Soft tackle magic. It mm -hmm. is, man. Those books by Sylvester Names are awesome. Yeah. Can you pass those down? Thank you. The soft tackle fly addict. He also wrote a very good book on spinners. Who is that? Uh, Sylvester Neems. Oh, thank you. Old, old school guy from, I think yeah, he was from yeah. the Bozeman area, yeah. He used to wax poetic on the um, Madison and how well soft tackles worked in the shallow 50 mile riffle. Oh, man. Yeah, they're killers. Yeah. I love them behind a dry fly. I just love them behind, and sometimes I swing them. Yeah. Yep. Do you need some more down there? You all got some? I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so remember, pull the fluff off, get that out of there. Okay. And then and then look at your fly and say, okay, uh, there's some longer fibers on here I don't want. And just get it down to what you need. You don't need a lot, but you need some. And so like I, I I've kind of come down to this. That amount. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I should probably put some of this away before I... John, what's the difference of doing this and then where they use the technique where they strip all the hackle off the top of the fly and just use the hackle on the bottom? No difference. No difference. Well, this will just give you a little bit heavier collar. Okay. Right? And since we're only doing two wraps on it, like I would do that, I would strip the, strip the hackle off like that on a size 20. Or if, or if somebody told me, said, in order for this to work here, you need to be like thread, just a few wisps going around. Then I would say, okay, I can strip it off. Oh, you mean just a couple of fibers yeah. off of the feather? But in our, fa in our fast Western water, yeah. I, I, I just, I just. You want more legs, more movement? Yeah, I want to, I just, you know, something there. Like sometimes I even build a, 
when we did this before, remember how I tied, I used the squirrel dub and I built a thorax, a ball of thorax with the, the squirrel fibers sticking out like that mm -hmm. behind it. So it looks like it's real full in the chest, you know? Okay, so we, we uh, grab the tip again and we're just gonna gently stroke back the fibers we're gonna use to hackle with. Just like that. Can you see this? See, see how like I'm gonna use these fibers here. This is my tie-in point. Okay. I'll just pull that back so I can get a tie-in point that's that I'm not. Oh, there you go. Okay, so now I'm onto this. This goes toward the eye. I actually slide it underneath the eye like this, and then my thread just captures it beautifully, like that. And then I just make a few wraps all the way down. I push the nose hairs back. If I can, I tie them in. If not, I just snip them out. Okay. Hackle pliers, two wraps. One. This is this is a little big, even for my taste. Two. I'm just gonna lock it down, trim it out of the way. Okay. That's a little long. But and then I just pull it back and I'm gonna make my head. Whip finish it off. And there's my egg layer, sunken egg laying caddis with the wings. You could grease this up and fish it right in the surface too if you wanted. <laughs> and you can see those wings underneath there. When you look at this from underneath it, yeah, they should be yeah, sticking out the side, whatever, a little sparkle. Whatever you need. I can't look up. <laughs> my wallet's over here, whatever. <laughs> Just stop bothering it's a little. <laughs> there we go. That's a little bit better. I was just about to say that these feathers are like really fresh because the hackles didn't break when I wanted to go. Yeah, they're not dry at all. I mean, this, this, this bird was killed two months ago, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, what critter is this? This is a Hungarian partridge. Okay, all right. Very nice. I, I went in and trimmed it a little bit out, which is kind oh, of... Killer. Fish that behind the dry fly at night. And, and, and now, Kelly Gallup speaks so highly of this fly that he says that he catches most of his evening fish on that in the summertime. Hmm. I don't know if he's just saying that for the camera or what, but I, I found that like that egg laying caddis is when those caddis come back. I also tie this in tan because that, that's what our summer caddis looks like here, 16 tan. It's like <clears throat> bug. It was going good and yeah. until it wasn't. You no, know, I would fish with anything that's fallen off of your visor. Yeah, yeah right. I, I would. I'm not doing that. They're all good. They're all good. Ooh, dear. They are good flies. Too. Yes, they are. Get on in there. Um, and uh, I, I just kind of really like this fly quite a bit. Um, and I've caught quite a few fish on it. Uh, especially in, like I said, in the evening. And he says it makes sense because that's when mostly the cats fly back to deposit. And you'll see them flying with that little egg sack on them. Like even the golden stone, same way a lot of people tie on that black egg sack on a golden stone fly dry and 
you'll see them flying around. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the prettiest of the the bugs around here is the golden western golden stone. It looks like you know something out of Walt Disney flying around. It, now that would be a yellow Sally. Or a yellow Sally smaller, but the golden one is like that. It's like big. It's yeah, not like the big Terranarsis, but it's. Now, is it distinctive? How distinctive is it? Very. What does it look like? A giant mayfly? It looks like a giant, a giant Huey mayfly. helicopter with the two, <laughs> the two blades. That's how I look at them. Oh. Robbie knows. He's a Marine. <laughs> He's been in and out of Huey's probably most of his career. <laughs> Huey's, Ospreys. Yep. I was up at Fort Peck one time and in a tree. Yeah. I saw the biggest fly I have ever seen. Was it a Dobson fly? Well, it was it was this big, yeah. and what it looked like was a giant mayfly done. Uh -huh. It looked exactly like that, except it was yellow golden. It might be a and opaque wings. You know what it might be? It might be a hexagenia limbana. They might have hexes. Well, okay, I guess that's probably the first they one call I've it ever the, seen. The, the old timers call yeah, it the, the Michigan mayfly because yeah. the that's hatches are so prodigious. Yeah. Hexagenia. That's what oh, it was. Sure enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, they're huge. In my hometown yeah, of Portage, yeah. Wisconsin, the hex hatch was so fun. prolific in the 70s that the, they had to get the snow off. plows off. Oh my god. To push oh, to push the bugs off the bridges because cars were sliding around in them. <laughs> oh god, you gotta love that. I was in it was like 76. Can you oh my god. god. My dad told me stories about like all the bridges across the Wisconsin River had lights on them. Oh my God! And so they, the county went and got the. A couple of years ago, they had a, a hatch that they were really worried about. It was yeah. going to be monumental. Oh yeah, like the cicada. Yeah. Yeah, the fourteen-year. So yeah, yeah. seventeen year. I was in DC for a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. they were awesome. Uh, yeah, I just remember the phenomenal natural event. event. Oh. Amazing. Yeah. The yeah, the biomass. The biomass involved in those hatches is That's just cool. unbelievable. I mean, I could be outside and talk to my mom and hold the phone out, and it sounds just like ray guns. Yeah. Wee, 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 yeah. wee. Yeah. your feather there. All right, which one? Oh, yeah, sorry, here. Uh, Let me get you one. Let's see. This one, will that work? Yep, that'll work. Yeah. Oh, this, is, this is just nasty. I'm going to need a Helen Keller That's fish to bite that. on this. <laughs> I'll take it. I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> so go ahead and take that off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is. Uh... You can unravel that. And get that out of there. You got to tie it. Shush. See, I, I lost my wings too. I did not. I'm not too worried about that though. Or shall I go ahead and put some new wings in? Yeah, we might as well. It's not gonna hurt nothing. So, one thing I like to do is if you just pinch this, uh huh, and just go right underneath like your string, yeah, or yeah, feed it under, yeah, and it kind of pinches it down for you, uh -huh. and it'll just let it sit there. You can do one wrap over, yeah, the wings are a little short on this one, and then now, come see, come see, wings. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, yeah. yeah and now well, you I think that little point of view camera is yeah. pretty cool. It is. We're trying to get it so that it focuses on the fly so that oh, we can. closer in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. It's, so it's a little tricky and you need a, like a that. background. Correct. So. It, like the ones I watch on TV who I respect are like, they have that blue background, they're wearing a blue shirt. Oh, okay. And so, and their vice doesn't move, mine's moved around. I'm always right, like, oh, right. like, check it out, you know. Right. And then I got one Charlie Craven uses right, right there. Right. It's right there. Yeah. It's probably $5,000 worth of camera. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Above got it for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> coming together. How long have you been tying? Yeah. Well, it's a hard question. A long time, but not very much. And there will be years gaps in between. Yeah, it's one of those things. That's yeah. Probably. And you're on, you're on, right? To keep your dexterity up. Like that is right. I came here to Sweetwater before COVID, and I was kind of getting my roll on. And then, of course, COVID. 
And now I came back and I'm like, I can't so see a dang thing, and I've lost dexterity. But I, I'll get there if I practice. No, just do yes, you will. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. I like okay. it. Well, so I take time for I'll take it again. I no, say no, about so 20 time years. Okay. So lay it on top. Yeah. But I'm more passionate about it now than at any time in my life. Well, what, why do you think that is? So, well, I tell you, it's a gift. Yeah. It's a gift from the yeah. divine. Slowly pull it back. That it, I just happen to have slowly, that yeah. kind of chemistry. So and that slowly the magic through. of it is it's when really this fish okay. and that takes your book, slams that sucker, and he's on his okay. way. Yeah. It's just and magic. Grab and grab I, think it, I think it goes back it's thousands of years when... When our lives depended on whether and or not I always we catch like that fish. Away from me mm. and for, but for just the, the, the whole life of it and the Yellowstone and is such a mystery. It's absolutely like humble. Yeah. You want to keep that, I'm, that now, uh, fiber in the middle. I, I, I very have to cautiously right say that I'm from Colorado. However, <laughs> I was born in Butte. <laughs> See, now you can tell because see how close my eyes are to <laughs> 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 but uh, I was weaned on the, on the Arkansas River there. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's a little creek little compared to the other. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah. It, it's been humbling, but everything is still the same. Mm -hmm. For the most part. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Still the same. And, and, uh, yeah. But so, so, but why do you think you feel that connection more now than you did 20, 30 years ago so from when you were tying. Well, I, I think it's directly because I'm too tight. Yo! Yeah. 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 What's up? Yeah. Good. good, it's good to see you, Evan. Good to see you too. You guys, this is Evan Keith. You okay. guys are in the oh, presence of greatness. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Good season too. Yeah, yeah. Make shoes. The more you no, do I don't. I wish. <laughs> yeah, right. I've got a pair on now. Keep it perpendicular to the shoe. Oh man. Devin guides the Yellowstone. He guides out of Hubbard's uh, Lodge in here, and sometimes with the Nelsons, and yeah, yeah. Pulls it all over. The fish fear you, old man. That's right. Yeah, okay. Women and yeah. women and chi yeah. old women and children love them. Fish fear them. <laughs> Oh, man. And now you're good How's it be? Good. Finish. Yeah? It, what, was that you see your flies down there? Tight right I didn't, I didn't look around for them. They're, down, they're, they're down, down behind the, the register. I got them in a big box. Just return the big box to me, would you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, what about, oh, yeah. Just run it through Dan. Okay. Just come put it put it on there. Okay. Yeah. I did it on his on his watch. His, okay. His, his, his dime. Okay. So. Cool. I'll come in and. Or I'll just charge it right now. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I know how to run that. I know you do. But what are you guys tying up? We've been tying uh, Mother's Day caddis. We've been tying. Uh, we just tied an egg-laying uh, drowned uh, drowned one, and we tied soft tackle, and we tied a peaking caddis. And uh, uh, do you guys want to tie? Uh, you want to try an emerger in the film? Sure. Okay. okay let's check let's let's yeah, get those curved nymph hooks out. Got a video going on? No, we're trying to figure out how to work, but like I can't figure out how to work it and teach the fly tying at the same time. Yeah. There's beer over there if you want. Nah, I got I got beer. You got beer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I've never seen a guy turn a beer down. <laughs> yeah. No. What? Hey, yeah, screw it. You must not be <laughs> feeling well. I knew it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is Robbie. Robbie. Yep. Nice to meet you. This is David. Yeah. This is Patty. This is Michael. I think, I think we maybe met before. Pre COVID tying on. Yeah. Yep. Pre COVID yeah. nights. Exactly. Where's your hound dog? Don't you use uh, Darla. Yeah, Darla, the, the golden retriever. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. She's in the truck. Okay, yep. all right. Good. <laughs> oh, that was the dog that was here? Uh yeah, she was here a lot. Okay, she's, she's here a lot. Yeah, golden yeah. retriever. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, real sure cute. Yeah. yeah. But heck yeah. Anybody been fishing? I haven't been fishing in yeah, since this week. It's been kind of busy. Yeah. Depews on Sunday. There you How go. There you go. How was it that? was a little bit tough to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Midging. I mean, like, you know. Depews is so easy, said no one ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. The goat path. Right. Right. Um, it's let, good to be out. Let's tie the emerger. Let's do it. Um, do, let's get the, the um, curved nymph hooks out. And we'll do the bubble back on this. You guys remember the bubble back we did before? The 16? Yep, 16. All right. 
few yep. wet shoes. This will work. And what else is going on? Is Are you working? Well, I talked to Lance, I told you that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, cool. You're working for him. Yeah. Not, not much, man. Just, uh -huh. yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Construction. Yeah, that's all right. Up and big sky. That's cool. But finally, I think me and James are going to try to float on Friday. Very nice. So pass those down. Yeah, those guys. Guys. People, people have been getting out. So you haven't heard about it. Yeah, I yeah. Hear they're, they're catching them on the big river now. Yeah, I haven't heard anything phenomenal. Right, but worth getting out. Of course. This is the time of year I've seen the biggest fish in my life too. So. Yeah. Well, they're all kind of they're all kind of concentrated in those holes. They don't have all that big water to swim around in. Exactly. What, what's turning the water is always an unusual color. It is like up there around Tom Miami. Yeah. So these are curved. Greenish color to I would I would not be deterred by greenish water. <laughs> it it isn't bit. green, no, it's gray. Yeah, it's gray. it's just surface runoff coming off the surface of the snow. snow. Yeah, exactly. Snow melting. But I, I still yeah. wouldn't be. I don't get deterred by the color of water until it's chocolate milk. Honestly, you know, if it, if it's if it's anything but chocolate milk, I'm, I'm probably worth fishing, in my opinion. Even on the top. Uh, no, I wouldn't say on the top. I mean, unless you see a pot of fish rising. I mean, it's Here. probably worth fishing. But, little Zelon yarn, uh, we're going to put a tail in on this one. I mean, usually Shock. this time of year, I'm only going to fish streamers. So, we're still on the olive that thread. Color tent. Olive thread, doesn't matter. Okay. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Here, I'm just going to take a honk. Especially with that color tent, I would only be fishing like a dark go, Patty. Take some of that. brown and pass black down to David. And that's probably all I'll fish all day. I might catch one or two, but mm -hmm. hopefully those one or two would yeah, be a pretty nice fish. Yeah, it'll always work. What? Exactly. That's what they're biting at now. We yeah. pass this down to the swinging streamers. Yeah. Dave and Robbie. Exactly. Oh, Where have you been fishing? I, I fish from four minutes to pews down. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you don't need a lot of this. Again, uh, okay. a lot of commercial uh, flies are over, over dressed. Take your thread down around the bend of this, right? Because we want this thing to look like it's butt sitting down in the water like this. And then our floating is going to be up at the top of this. So you can see I've taken this down to almost the midway point. I'm going to pull off a few strands of this. I'm going to tie it in. This little fly has done well for me too. I um, was fishing with Mark Bolton. I had tied a bunch of these and uh, pulled over in that stretch from Pine Creek down, right? Little wispy, little bit here, right? Mm -hmm. Not a lot. You can even pluck a little bit of this out. And then I'm just going to drop that off the, the butt end. So we're Im imitating a shuck? Yeah, a trailing shuck, a nymphal shuck, right? That's what it's crawling out of. Okay. It's really a small amount, huh? Yep, just like that. And then I'm just going to trim this stuff out of there. But you can see my nymphal shucks are just wispy. I, I want them to, I don't want them to look like meat. Yeah. I want them to look like they're about to be dropped off and sent into the ether. Very delicate. Yeah. You can come in here and trim this. It doesn't have to be so long, but like that. Um, and then I'm just going to go up. I'm going to make a, just kind of build a little bit of a taper. One, two, three, four, five, up and then halfway down and then back up again. back down, tie in a piece of, uh, when you get back down to the tail, one of the cool things about the tail is you can go underneath it and it'll pop it up a little bit and it'll lock it into place. Just like that. Okay. Again, uh, I don't think it matters. You can use, I like the chartreuse wire, but copper wire to protect the, we had it right here just a second ago. Into any mid Uh I've heard about a couple on the river up uh, in uh, up by Tom Minor by the thermal. Down you know? by Emma Creek, there was one. Yeah. I, I am hearing about it. Yeah. Yeah. It gave a Nice. Uh, they're around. Uh, this is the this is the time of year I see the most epic mid on the Yellowstone. 
Oh, is yeah. that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me is, that's this is the only time in my life that I've seen balls, those mating balls and clusters of midges rolling down yeah. the river. Poor man's diffuse. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that big kind of hole right where Nelson's comes out into the river. Yeah. Yep. There. Um, you guys have enough wire? It, again, this wire is really only to protect so you can get a couple fish out of a fly. Um, and so I'm just going to take some. So the wire down to the shuck. And yep. The shuck is right. And then I'll just take some peacock hurl. Like this. What you need? No, I'm good. Just keep. Uh, okay. I'm gonna tie it in. I'm just gonna make my body the exact same way we've made every body in the last three flies, right? I'm gonna leave myself three eyes at the top to um, to accommodate our wing that we'll be putting in. Okay. I bought myself a fancy rotary vise and I don't even use it. <laughs> like this. See how it looks just a little stubby there than, than it did before? And then I'll reverse wrap the, this on there just to kind of keep it all together. that helicopter this off sorry guys that's all right boy when they get going they get going <laughs> mine too mine too i'm gonna pass this around i want you to grab two uh two feathers out and match them up like we've done in the past some cdc this will be a fly that you do not use paste on, you use the shake it. $15 back now. I know. <laughs> Feathers from a duck's ass. <laughs> I know, I, I found a bunch of them on sale at, uh, at um, Dan Bailey's. I'm just looking. You have to get okay. Over. Sure yeah, so I bought, I bought like, I bought like $25 of CDC oh, well, and I got yeah, like, I yeah, I mean like, a bit of a hoarder, like you know, I got like this kind of stuff. Wow, nine bucks for that for that big one that would work for a PMD. I know. Oh man, oh yeah, that's nice. I see Dan's down in the keys. Yeah, he just got back. Yeah, yeah, he's um, he had a good time, sounds like. Yeah, yeah, saw a picture of a redfish. Yeah, his wife got yeah. it. He got some uh, snook, missed a bunch of tarpon. Yeah, yeah. big tarpon. Yeah, that, that's all there is in the keys of this giant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So tip to tip. Okay. I'm gonna do my trick again here where I wet Hold my on fingers. one sec, Ken. Okay. I gotta catch up. Hold on one sec. That's no, all right. I'm sorry to. I'm moving along faster because I wanna do the dry fly after this. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I was told that you could go to an archery club over in three, four. Yep get the dust that they use for their feather fletchings and it's the same as the frog's fanny for half the price. Really? Oh, really? You just keep refilling your... Huh. Well, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. Never... Yeah. Can I get over to three parts? All right. <laughs> get a five gallon bucket of it. <laughs> so when are you going? We'll all check uh, yeah. yeah. You can take my truck. Next <laughs> week probably. Yeah. So we're gonna make that bubble. You guys remember the bubble from a couple weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Just strip some of the fluff out of here so it's not bothering you, but like, I wet my fingers and stroke it down so it's nice and flat because this stuff flies all over the place. I tie in and then I drag it back. Remember that, that little trick with the CDC? So I'm gonna tie it in kind of midway, right, right here. One, two loose wraps, and then I'm just gonna pull it to where I want it which is right about there, okay? 
And then I lash it down all the way back here to where this all starts. The bubble back is created by, take the nose hairs out. I fold it over and then I just push it back to make a bubble. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like this, two wraps to hold it in place. One, come on, one, two, three. There's my bubble, I'm gonna get rid of all this excess. Now that bubble will float that thing like this, bum in the water. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna make some, a little, I'm gonna hold it in place, because I don't like it spinning on me, but I'm gonna come back. And the last trick on this is some deer hair. With deer hair, hold it out like this, spread it out and then pull all that fluffy stuff because that's what makes it sink. Put it in my stacker. I'm gonna measure it off to be um, just a little bit longer than the bubble. There's a little too much in there. Just a little bit longer than the bubble like this. I pinch. So now you see I got those jagged edges like that. Pinch wrap it. One, two, three, four, five. You'll notice it gives it a nice little head. You can see that thing a country mile away. Mm. It's a little long, hold on. <laughs> There we go. One, two, three, four. There we go. This is why I pay you all the time. I'm just gonna trim that off real nice. And then I'm gonna run my thread through the middle of all that to secure it. Okay, all the way back to the here. And then I take one piece off of here or, or even that or here, we'll just do this quick this way. This is a little bit of complicated fly, but trust me when I say the dry fly is gonna be a lot easier than this. And then I just do this with it. Just give it a nice little head. And this is a trick from the salmon fly people. So you can make these as complicated or as easy as you want. I'm not beyond making things complicated for myself. <laughs> Did you, you ramp the, the peacock curl forward and then I just yeah, yeah. Did you pull, pull that down? back? Uh -huh. then I, wrapped mine I learned this pattern from an Englishman named uh -huh. Davy McPhail. Here, you and I talked about him. Oh, yeah. 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 These I watched here. him tie something to get them all in yep. line together. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Put it at the eye of the hook, start to pull it back. Like we did yeah. with the, uh, yeah. one, two, two three. three. This little bugger has caught me some fish, though. Sheesh. Okay, look at this from the bottom, you know. So you got CDC bubble underneath it. You got a wing that you can see. And ideally, this, this fly will sit like this. Hmm. We'll pass that around. Mm -hmm. oh, that's nice. The wing, the, the deer hair wing is a little wonky. I, I'm just unpracticed on it. I can make it better. Stop being so humble, yeah. Jackass of all trades, <laughs> Evan. That's a nice book. Alright. You gonna get out soon? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, hopefully this weekend. I'm, I'm painting the basement right now. I said I would do it, so I gotta get it done yeah. before it gets, you know, busy. Yeah. Okay, what are we using for the, the egg set? The egg sack I was just using uh, for this, this uh, right here. Yeah, I just wanted to show you this. You don't have to tie this fly. It's a bit much. I want to show you the dry fly, which is a lot easier to tie, and we're going to use deer hair with that. So there's another hock of deer hair down there if you need to use a stacker. 
So pick a dry fly hook and um, that will kind of round out the whole life cycle from case caddis on down. Here's the case. You guys going to throw some on there. Yeah. That was your girlfriend. It was her birthday recently, huh? It was, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. This one got a week. She's just doing good. Yeah. We, we went down to, like I said, went down, you, or, you know, went down to Atlanta. I wish I could see that guy in concert at some point. He's incredible, man. Yeah. He's unbelievable. Who's that? Billy Strings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan saw him at Pine Creek. Really? Did you see Marco Back Price is coming to Pine Creek? I've heard that. I did see that. Would yeah. you put those I'm uh, going to see Billy at Red Row. Oh, yeah, no, you didn't tell me that. Third row. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got lucky. By now, you should be on a first name basis with him, <laughs> Evan. You groupie, huh? Uh, I wish I could follow him around, but yeah. I can't afford that. Plus, it's kind of weird, but, you know, other than that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I chased the Grateful Dead around a little bit when they were Did back you? in the eighties. Oh yeah, really? I saw them the last time they ever played at Alpine Valley. I didn't think and then a friend of mine back in Port, Wisconsin, told me a great story. He goes, "You're a great joke." He goes, "Hey, what do deadheads say uh, after the drugs wear off?" And I go, "What?" And he goes, "Man, this music sucks." <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they say? <laughs> Man, this music sucks. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Time really good. <laughs> there. Aside from the first week of midges, this is kind of what we've been tying, Evan. Some foam, some betas. Foam. I like the skull. Better look at the most for chums. All right, just try to make the bubble, and then we'll, get, we'll do the dry. And the dry will be easy after you try to put all this on there. This is way more extensive than what James used to teach. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? James just needs a, James can teach all that stuff. No, he definitely could, but. Yeah. <laughs> These guys will tell you that sometimes I move a little fast in here. Now, there's that little yellow Sally, that yellow, uh, that uh, the chubby Sally down there is. Oh yeah, that's a killer for me. Yeah, it's a phenomenal fly. Yeah. Say again about these uh, deer hair. Here, use uh, so uh, just spread them out and pull all the fluffy stuff out of the bases of okay. it. Okay. And that's the stuff that makes like a fly sink. Right. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. Just like that, and then put it tip first into this. Yeah. Give it a couple knocks. really just working waiting for the season to start yeah waiting for the season to start i'm gonna take a couple of weeks off uh, before of course the season starts lance is gonna come and do some work here you yeah. can help him with that or what i think maybe yeah put the baseboards back on Dep depending on the timing yeah um but yeah i think i'm gonna help him do that put the baseboards back on and but yeah really just kind of Nice. When are you doing that? Uh, last week, April. Oh, cool. Booked myself two days of tarpon fishing. In St. John? Yeah. Wow. Nice. That's Pusser's rum. Get rid of it. Uh, have you ever had Pusser's rum? Uh, no. You'll this have it. This like my first time going to like a Caribbean beach. You're going to so. love it. Pasty Brand. white self was good. Lobster eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. <laughs> you remind me of my. I'm come back and be like, oh, I'm ready for the season. <laughs> my friend Devin Demon. Yeah, I just, just been out all winter. Out. Yeah. <laughs> it's still a little much. Uh, my uh, my friend Devin Beeman, similar ruddy complexion yeah. and uh, red hair. Yeah. You know, and he just like he would just be like the color of the solo cup. <laughs> The lab stack. See, I think. Evan, what's uh, Brewer doing? Is he around? Yeah, Brewer's around. Um, 
he's still ice fishing a bunch. Is he? Yeah, he's he's got a thing going on doing some, I think some, I don't know, taking ice or taking kids ice fishing or something like oh, that cool. right now. So he's doing that and he's working up at Chico. I saw him at Chico um, down there night. Yeah. We saw him too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's working up at Chico <coughs> and uh, he's kind of in the same place, ready for the season to start. So. So are all three now working up at Hubbard? Um, Brewer's kind of 50-50, and me and James are up there pretty much full-time, so. That's good. Yeah. I'm having dinner with Michael on Friday. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Is, is uh, Chris Bausch, is he still up there, or is he going to retire? Bausch. Must retire, because yeah. he's been there a long time. Yeah. He's a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't ring a bell. I know all the guys up there, but it doesn't ring a bell. All right. Dry fly hook. Okay. 16? 16. Swan been kicking around? Mm. Yeah, I see him around. He comes like he comes in twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty usual. We have lunch. Yeah. You <laughs> pizza together. Well, that's a neat little <laughs> sitting in the drift boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. He oh, he man. was doing he was doing a lot of work up at um, Crazy Mountain Ranch. Yeah. Yeah. This winter? Yes. Doing Here we what? Go. You got, you got some? Yeah, um, customer service. Yes. It's the, he ended up being like a helper oh, for perfect. the general manager and cool. toward the end of the season. Cool. I like it when it's bleached. I can see it easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. You know, if he's getting a lot of bookings for his He booked me once or we did, um We did a Spring Creek trip uh, two weeks ago. Cool. That was fun. Cool. The guy uh, was a butcher from Macon, Georgia, and he sent uh, he sent uh, each of us a box with like his uh, duck prosciutto. Um, I mean, like wow, that's gourmet cool. bacon. Yeah. And uh, and pepperoni. My my daughter made like gourmet pizzas last night. That's just there you nice. go. Oh, yeah, it was a really nice gift. You know, hat. And, you know, he's a super super nice family. From Macon, Georgia. I said, like, you guys have a special pig down there called the Ossible Hog, known throughout the, the South. And he's like, how'd you know that? <laughs> like, what about, uh, did I you, said, did you know I said, I'm Czechoslovakian. Pork is the meat of my people. Yeah. Did, uh, did he know about Follow Your Nose? Uh, he did not. He did not, really. This is their first time up here. Oh, cool. Okay. I was about to say, they're from Macon. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, of course, I had to throw out the old uh, making bacon joke. Yeah. 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 Grab, uh, for this one, real simple, you can put a you can put a rib in this one or you don't have to at all. Just because it's a dry fly. You don't want to sink it with your materials. Um, we're just going to tie in tips of peacock curl. This is the X-Caddis, right? So you just oh, I'm sorry. We need a little bit of shuck on there to be a true X-Caddis. All right, so but you tie just down to the bend of the hook, right? Yep, just on the bend of the hook. We're just building a, like a normal dry fly body. Um, a little bit of a shock here off the back end of it. To be true to the X-Cast, you got to have the shock. And what's the shock? The shuck is um, the trailing shuck of uh, the nymph that's... The what material do you Oh, this is his Z-Lon. Just pass that down. Yeah, you, you got, got it right there. there. You, you got, got that yeah, right there. Got okay. Um, now you can tie in your tips. If you want to build strength with this, I'll teach you another trick uh, with uh, the thread on this. And this, I tie this in 10, 12 through 20, uh, olive. Evan's getting a bunch of olive. Uh, I, I think they look like caps flies, but they're 100% caps Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that fish olive, 10 through 20, you well, know. Fish that's easy. Yeah, that thing's great. Yeah. It, they look awesome, too. Well, that's what... Talked about my hinge rig I fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I fish that behind the olive sparkle minnow. Yeah. And the black sparkle minnow. Yeah, there you go. That's my rig for most of the season. 
I I am also a devotee of the Sparkle Minnow. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so little trick on this one is we're going to come to the back here. Come all the way back to where your shuck is in and just pull off a little bit of line. See, I got, I'm holding my bobbin like this and, and this in my forefinger. We're just going to wrap the thread to give this some strength. Okay, we make a rope with the peacock curl. Okay, it's just like dubbing, right? Yeah. Okay, and then watch. I'm just gonna hold the two of them together and I'm just gonna make wraps all the way front. What kind of sorcery is this? Oops. Oops, oops. It's a trick. It's all done with It's all mirrors. smoke and mirrors. So this should be the story of my autobiography. Jan Axtell, the smoke and mirrors. Sorry, God. Okay. And so this will give this fly a little bit more life as well. Okay? And then he, we're almost done with this, this fly, by the way. All we're going to do is tie in our... Mm. Tie in our wing again with of deer hair. And I think the deer hair you guys got down there is better than the stuff I got up here. So with a nice little head. There we go. And you can put a little egg sack on this if you want to at some point in time if you're tying these at home. Mm. As an egg laying one that's on the surface. This might be a little... So are we giving us uh, how many uh, coming up right behind the eye or... No, no, give yourself some space to tie in the wing, okay. right? Okay. I'm just going to do this. Get some of this fluff out of there. Can I see that little hair stack or two? The mini one? Yep. Oh, anyone would be... Anyone will be fine. Thanks. You're bringing the peacock up to the eye? No, nope, just a little, give yourself one, a little space. Okay. We're gonna measure off, take a little bit of this out of there. Measure how far we want the wing to come back. I usually go right back to where it, it, it ties in or the shuck is tied in, like the length of the body. I measure it off, I trade it off and I'm gonna trim it right here. This is the trick to deer hair, I think. Nice and square, right? See that? I'm gonna lay it down right on top where I want it. Nice, easy wrap. Tighter wrap, tighter wrap. And you should come up with good. And just like your uh So what I, what I typically, I, you know, like the elk hair caddis head, right? I'm not a huge fan of that. You're always trimming that stuff. It works fine. It's my personal preference. You don't have to listen to me. But what I like to do is I like to come in here and I like to trim it a little closer. Just like this. And then I run, you saw me do this on the last one. I run the the through the, the butts mm -hmm. and that locks it into place and I'll make a little plateau there and then it's looking okay I'll take a piece of this you can leave it just as the butts just like that but like I've seen elk hair caddis spin the hairs all of a sudden all over the place so I'll take one or two of these this is kind of big I'll just do one um, I'll tie it in and then I just give it a really nice finish a la Davy McPhail. Okay. Just like that. So 
So you're wrapping over your tie-in? Mm -hmm. huh. Just like that. Mm. I'll even come back. Put it right like that. Come on forward. And tie it off. Wow. You do not have to do that. But I like this one. I like the way it looks. I might do that more for myself than the fish. <laughs> I messed it up. Could you put a drop of super glue on? You bet. In fact, I would encourage you to do it. <clears throat> I just think it finishes the head really nice. You can see I'm, I've crammed the eye a little bit on this one, but. And that is the X Caddis right there. This is uh, uh, Craig Matthews uh, over in West Yellowstone, Blue Ribbon Flies. And I'll float like a cork for you. What's that? It's like when you find your first gray hair in your eyebrow, and you're like, what, what what's that? <laughs> oh. Oh, where are you going? You got it? Yep. Yeah. And that's and that's the excatus. Uh, some people dress it even a little thinner than that without that head. It's just oh, lashing on and go. But I like them. I like, I like it that way. I try. I achieve to like be Davy McPhail sometimes. And the, you be you. Just be me. Yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the dry. That's it. And then I just drop the. I just drop the, 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 the you know, like I might tie that in a 14 and then drop a 16 uh, soft tackle behind it. Devin, or uh, Evan just, Evan just, you know, he ordered five dozen of these soft tackles and he does the same thing on his nymph rigs, mm. right? Yeah. And I, I love them too. I just think they, they just produce fish, yeah. especially in the park. Definitely. Slough Creek, man, that's my go-to. 18 soft tackle underneath the. Terrestrial. Well, that's what I got those 16s for. Yeah, I know. Without the beehive. Uh, With that being the Lamar River. Lamar would work great too. I, but the, you know, like how um, slew is kind of glassy, greasy. Uh, they love to sit in those ditches, in those depressions, and they'll just come up real slow in that greasy water. And what looks like a rise form is really them just eating something just below the surface. Yeah. And that and that that soft tackle does the trick almost every time. Oh, oh god. It's painfully delightful to watch it. Oh god. I'm obsessed with it. Speaking of the Lamar, I cannot wait. I told you I told you I got in there the day on I mean, October 15th. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Every hole I threw a stream, I threw the sparkle in. It's probably going to be incredible. Yeah. Year. There was a little bit of me that wanted to get somebody with a horse to get, like, like I was thinking about leaving the hospital last summer. Yeah. Like, I'll just get a horse and I'll sneak in the back way and I'll just go live up there for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and then Vicky looked at me and said, you can go live there all you want. Don't wow. come back. <laughs> Have you been to Cash Creek? I have been to Cash Creek and Miller Creek. I don't know. Miller's, Miller's the next one up. Next really? one up, yeah. As you How wash much? farther, well, about three, four miles. It's way in there. Yeah. Cutthroat, as, as uh, Mark Anderson likes to describe Cash Creek. Yeah. Cutthroat fishing the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've had some days on the moor though that are definitely. I have too. Yeah. I mean, right in sight of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one light switch. Really. Well, I had a, I had a day. I don't know, maybe two summers ago that were it's freaking August. Yeah. Super hot. Yep. Hoot owl. Um, park. Um, huh? Not the park. Yeah. And uh super hot. Couldn't catch fish all day long. Had a lady make a cast, cast it too far, cast it into some white water. Saw a fish roll. Yeah. I said set. Sure enough fish on yeah and that's what we did water and we kept doing it but i'm talking like 
top of the white water, like top of the rapid. You never and see that. And you're just seeing these fish roll. And we did that for the rest of the day. We probably caught 20 fish mm -hmm. just by chopping hoppers. And she couldn't see it. She couldn't see anything. But I would see a fish roll in the rapid, you know, over set. the top of a rock. And I would just yell, set. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't even see your fly. Oh my god. <laughs> it was... I used to be the uh, backcountry ranger at Lamar. Oh really? Yeah. yeah that's, and that's before I fished. Yeah. But I'd show up on Monday morning, get my horse and my mule, and I'd go up for 10 days. Yeah. Just going to the cabins up there. And yeah. Miller Creek and Caffey Creek. And... Oh you yeah. Were, you were a ranger? Yeah. Did you know Bruce Cunningham by chance? Bob Cunningham? Oh, uh, Bruce was his name. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I he knew. was the tire guy. He was a ranger. Oh. Well, this was another lifetime ago that I did this, so... Wow. I bet you saw some pretty incredible things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and that's all I would do was to, to check fishing permits. Yeah. Oh, really? And, yeah, I mean, check guys fishing and camping permits. Yeah. But at that time, the, the park didn't charge for fishing permits. Right. Yeah. It was free. So how you'd go up there and there'd be an outfitter and you'd have about a half a dozen all unsigned. It's like, oh yeah, here's our fishing permits, you know. Yeah. You yeah, know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> good luck, guys. Yeah, have a good luck. day. Um yeah, I Yeah, uh You remember Lindsay Carlson, right, Dave? Yeah, she, yeah. Yeah. Her husband Mark was like, called me on the phone. And, on, yeah. and he was like Hey, I just finished hiking around the Thunderer down the Cash Creek Trail. Uh -huh. And I was like, I was like, oh, did you fish? He's like, yeah. He goes, I go, and? And he goes, it's like uh, cutthroat <laughs> fishing the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I was like, oh, two weeks later. Humping it up there from Soda Butte, walking upstream. Sadly, I... Yeah. Uh, I Always afraid of getting get eaten by a bear in there. <laughs> I hiked up to Cash with just the one time with Alex and Ray when one time and it was two out in the park, I guess. Not That's last year, nice but the, the year before last. Yeah. That's a beauty. And uh You're generous. I mean we got up there with like an hour to spare before. <laughs> yeah. And uh it was just too low. So luckily I or I didn't get to finish Cash Creek at its best. You can go back. Yeah, no. I definitely will. You know, like, I'm always surprised at, like, how cutthroats, even in lower Mill Creek, like, where it goes from pavement to gravel, yeah. right yeah. there at the the Petrich Ranch, right? And how all that water that gets sucked out of Mill Creek, yeah. right? How, like, in those buckets, there are giant cutthroat down there, just yeah. sitting in, like, something the, the width of this table, maybe half as long. Yeah. Isolated. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Can't swim anywhere. I know. <laughs> they don't have swimming holes out here. <laughs> okay, so I got kind of a lot of long deer here. That's all right. Sort that'll, of a, that'll pay. It's a deadhead. No, oh, no, no, that'll fish. It's 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 dressed nice and slim too. As Kelly Gallup said, it'll hunt. Yeah. That's fine. Out. Well, your hair's fine. We did a Kelly Gallup fly today. Well, yeah. Yeah. Which one? The sunk, uh, the egg-laying uh, sunk caddis. Where's that one Kelly you were showing me earlier. Yeah. Right here, this one, the one with the little egg sack on the butt. Yeah. 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 And the wing underneath it. Yeah. Nice. I see that little fly. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm gonna get out of here. Huh? All right, it was really awesome seeing you, man. Been a long time. Well, I'm gonna well, go well, down there and cash out yep no worries yeah. have a good year man yeah i'll yeah, try my best it's good seeing you good seeing you bring, yeah. yeah. huh? bring me back that box though yeah huh bring me back that box i will all right well remember your name again rob rob yeah. good meeting you good 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 meet you. Meet you. nice meeting you man good meeting you too See you, good seeing you too you too are you working at sweetwater no i just completed their guys school no. last oh, week sweet yep yeah. how was it it was great on the also uh big one cool cool Big one fishing good. Good. Yeah. I've been thinking about going down there. It's fine. It's worth it. I, I got a, I got a, I got a month of weekend trips. Hopefully, I'm going to the Missouri in a month. In in, a, in one month. That's coming up. for two days. I'm trying to think about the big going to Missouri or the Big Horn in the next month or so. I got a yeah. friend flying in. Ray Charles and Sam Wands. Yeah. And, uh, we we did pretty good. Yeah. 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 
Uh, are you sticking around here for the summer? Or? I am. Cool. He needs to get together with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> James and Brewer and... The malcontents and misfits. The yeah. So I'm, I'm using my GI Bill to go to oh, sweet. three other schools. Oh, sweet. Uh, so my next school is on, in April. It's uh, Elk Island and Animal Packing. Oh, cool. And then eight days after that, I go get my class four and five whitewater rescue. Oh, that's awesome. And then uh, in October, I'll have the Sweetwater Advance class four. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. We had a, uh, I guess, a, no, it wasn't this past summer, but the summer before last, we had a guy, Rich. You met Rich? Yeah. Yeah. He did the same thing. He did straight out of the army and he used to GI Bill and hop around the guide schools. Yeah. And now he's guiding up on the Missouri. So, that's the plan. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Are you going to stick around the area or are you going to. Here, yeah. My girlfriend's a nurse at the hospital. Oh, cool. So she does all the living right now. There you go. Yeah. You from here? No, nah, Virginia originally. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Country. Cool. That was from East Tennessee. East Tennessee. No. What? West Tennessee. West Tennessee. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the butt end of Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was from East Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've driven through it once. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get a deal, y'all. All right. It was really Go awesome seeing you. Around. Absolutely. See you on the river, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Man. Well, y'all have a great rest of the night. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Let me know all those fish. Send me pictures. <laughs> that, those are the patterns I got for you tonight. Um, good. That caddis drive works everywhere. You can do the same thing with tan dubbing, hair's ear dubbing, whatever. Work everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and I love the soft tackle behind it. Excellent. Thank you, Sansi. Well, I came to be inspired and like after listening to these guys' career choices and how their careers are going, I feel like kind of a rusty spinner that just comes <laughs> <laughs> up on the bank. Bent. You ever feel like that? Oh, every morning. Thank you. Jesus, now I'm going with Big Braille. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is, like, this is it. What this is the last ride right down the river. Maybe I can go find an old caddis and might still kind of oh, a little bit more. That's good. Oh, I thought you might. This is Griff's one. Oh, no. I like this one. It's very, very yeah. nice. Uh, so what was your career choice? My, my career choice? Yeah, now that you're having this lament. Well, you can't live as long as I've lived and not do a lot of different things. And, and I have. And I uh, consider myself to be a pretty skilled craftsman and love a lot of ways. I've seen fly tires that literally have the hands of the surgeon, mm -hmm. and had they not been a fly tire, they would have been a surgeon. Mm -hmm. That's how I view it. But I've done a lot of different things, We're, worked a lot in mechanical fields and commercial fields, and Jesus, I was that moment floor covering business for a long time. Yeah. Kind of migrated to Montana, just fortunately, my some of my family lives in Livingston. So I got the opportunity to come to an area that's absolutely unique on the globe. Absolutely unique. And I'd love to see a world-class fly fisherman come out here and show me something on this Yellowstone, buddy, because this bugger will bring you to your knees. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think I think it is. I, I think the Yellowstone, I, I sometimes refer to the Yellowstone as a fickle lover. Yeah. Yeah. And, and days that, that, that you will just... Blow your mind. After fish, after fish. Like, where uh, are they coming bonkers. from? I mean, nice browns, nice rainbows. One after the other. I think the Pine Creek is like that a day out there. One time. Yeah. I, I'll tell you what, like, I will, uh, I will say this about the Yellowstone. I've fished from Maine, where Dave's from through the upper midwest through the 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 black hills and i have never seen a place that has fish as large as the yellowstone river on average go to argentina well someday yeah. that's the plan i'd love to go yeah, there oh there. that's interesting you should say yeah. that. i just think that the fish here on average are in that river um yes sir 
I don't remember all the login stuff. All right, I'll just I'll take care of it tomorrow. Yeah, but I left a note down there. Sweet. Charge tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Honey. You're welcome. Yep, uh, I'd love to go to Argentina. I, I, that's like on my bucket list. Chile, Argentina, Patagonia. Really? Oh yeah, the stories you yeah, hear are amazing. unbelievable. Better hurry up and get going because it's probably like everything else. It's gonna shut down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's pretty the, amazing. The clock it is really ticking. Is. For, they were saying that places the, that used to be not known very right. really well. They're thinking that the next Chinook salmon record is going to come out of somewhere down there. Yeah, I'm right. not surprised. Yeah. I want to go to the Rio Grande in Tierra del Fuego to, to fish for sea run brown trout. Yeah. So that's going to be, that would be great. I'm going to go to, I'm going, I'm checking a bucket list trip in May, so I'm not, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I used to fish in Rio Grande a lot, you know, Dale North, Colorado. Yeah, I was going to say, and, the other uh, Rio Grande. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Nicest browns ever. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm dusted by the average size of the fish in the, in the Yellowstone river because it like yeah. you go anywhere else in the country and fish are usually between 8 and 12 inches that's the average right and here the average is around 16 inches yeah there's some small ones and there's a lot of bigger ones trick is to get him to express an interest in your offering. Be there at the right time at the right place. self-respecting rainbow can expect, appreciate a well-tied fly. I don't even want to catch it. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> stupid. I used to say when I saw the chubby, the chubby for the first time, I said, I, I said, uh, what, no self-respecting trout is going to eat that. <laughs> and then I started fishing and I was yeah. like, oh my God. Or you can wonder what the conversation the fish are saying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, here, look at this. Look at this thing. <laughs> What the hell is that? What is that? Supposed to be a cat? John, uh, what's the plan? Like I said, I'm not going to be here next Wednesday. Right. Are you going to be here Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday? I'm going to do it all the way through uh, runoff, and then okay. the summer kind of starts, and we'll see what Dan wants to do. He may want to keep it going, and we'll just change the time or something. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll be doing it, and um, we have to decide what we want to tie next time. What do you guys want to do? Do you have any? You have anything you want to learn, Dave? So we'll do it in two weeks, or it's all it's all a learn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything's a new experience. We well, need for to me. go back and practice some of the one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. How yeah. about a deer, well, that's what I do. deer hair emerger? Oh yeah, have you ever seen those ones where they where they soak the deer hair? You can get different colors and then wrap the hook with it. It's a Paul sure. Weaver fly. Yes, sure. Anytime. Yeah. Well, see you, Dave. We'll see you guys later. Awesome seeing you, Dave. Awesome see you, Dave. Awesome see you, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. So, how did Julie for me? Will do. It's just a killer fly. Just a very as simple as an easy yeah. fly. Well, thank you, folks, for having me. Hey, right. Michael well, was really. I met Michael last time. week. I said, he was like, I mind if I come? I'm like, please. You got sweet water going here? What? You got sweet water going here? This year? No, I mean, this isn't mine. This is, I'm just kind of a, okay. a minion. Okay, cool little hackle pliers. You can get over at Hatch Finders for three ninety five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Coolest hatch, coolest pliers ever. Yeah, oh. I love them. Right, I love them. Yeah, so yeah. Here, hand, hand me that. I'll, is, I'll is take care of it. Is there anything you want to keep here? No. Okay, let me get this stuff here. Um, what, what do you guys want to do next um, so I can prepare? Well, I mean, you guys speak up, but I'd like to fill my box with sparkle minnows. But you want to do sparkle I mean, minnows? Those aren't Super hard. Super easy. Yeah, we exactly. We just need, I've got so maybe, all the stuff for it. Maybe y'all want to try some more advanced techniques. I know that's not like a super hard one. <laughs> well, I, it's a killer I really fly. I mean, I... I uh, I fish the, that fly as much as I fish any uh, as a as a Pat's rubber legs in this river, mm -hmm. and, and in the spring creeks, and in the park. I'm, I'm yeah, open to no, anything. And uh, yeah, sparkle minnow. We'll, we'll do olive and we'll do black. Yeah. Work. Yep. I have the EP fibers for it too, and the brushes. So it'll be easy. In yeah. uh, Enrico Puglesi. Mm -hmm. They had, I had this little fly that I tied that for the shop, and it was a 
then there was a guy who was like, it's called Axtell's Assassin. And I'm like, it's called the Black and Blood Midge. Don't do that. Don't put your name on it. It's a surefire way to invite criticism. So I started listening to that uh, Andy Mill podcast. Oh, yeah, he's something else. Mill House. And I was just listening to the episode with Tom McGuane. Really oh, interesting. A lot of it's about writing and. Yeah. Hunter S. Thompson, etc. But it's yeah. very interesting. I, I'll tell you what, like I don't get starstruck. I worked for a company that regularly catered to uh, famous people, politicians, people in business. So I don't get starstruck. But Tom McGuane, yeah, that guy's writing is like for me, like yeah, it's, it's really good. Like you just I hang on every word of yeah. everything he writes, yeah, and I'm like. And I know he lives in town, and I'm like, God, I, like, I might get a little fanboyish <laughs> around this guy. I saw him over at in Big Timber at the Grand in the bar one night. He didn't drink, but... Uh, I hear the... Is that, is that the fellow that wrote for Outdoor Magazine? Oh, that's yeah, Tim Cahill you might be thinking about. Or, or, and there's another guy, too. But, oh, yeah, uh, there's a ton of them in town. I mean, he wrote 92 Degrees in the Shed. He's oh, written God. a bunch of stuff. Some Horses. Yeah. That book is fantastic. I don't even yeah. like horses. I don't want a long horse. <laughs> yeah. uh, that book is fantastic. Um, you know, he's in three Hall of Fames, and one of them is the Cutting Horse Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly piqued my interest. Like, like yeah. I can have a conversation with people about it now because I read that book. It's really interesting. Ninety-two episode. degrees in the shade. What are the yeah. the longest silence? You need to read that book. The longest silence. It's all about his fishing exploits. Yeah. It's yeah. Po it's like it's a, you hang on every yeah. single word. And he's, he's married it. to um, Lori Buffett, Jimmy Buffett's sister. And he talks about his father-in-law, Jimmy Buffett's and her father and how he quit drinking and Jimmy Buffett's father quit smoking on the same day like he took cart the you know his father-in-law took cartons of cigarettes and threw them out and he had his last booze and that was like 30 years ago wow. That's it. That's it. Interesting. Well, I, I, I give you the limit to, litmus test that I use on young guys and, I, and Robbie passed it with flying colors today so what would you rather do? Would you rather like go out, smoke pot, and drink beer? Or would you rather go fishing? And if they hesitate for a second, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, ah, careful. First thing he said, Rob said, fish, yeah. like that fast. So I was like, he's in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, that is one guy. Like, I appreciate his work so much. Where I'm, I kind of be like, uh, I think I better go stand in the corner here and yeah. not make a fool of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's it, it, that book, The Longest Silence, could be one of the best books ever written on fly fishing. Mm -hmm. The existential why I fish book, right? Right, that's right. He's amazing. Yeah. You know who I've been checking out lately is um, JT Van Zant. Oh, Towns, yeah. Towns Van Zant's so, son. Yeah, he's a fishing guy down in, in uh, um, Texas. In Rockport. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting guy. Interesting you say that because I'm just reading a book called The Ruthless Poets of Texas mm -hmm. about the Texas singer-songwriters. Towns Van Zant, Guy Clark. Uh, uh, there's so many. Where David Rodriguez, start. Steve Earle. I don't even know yeah. where start and stop. Steve Earle is actually playing in England when I'm going to be there. I saw him at the old I school I did last too. Summer. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him a bunch of times. I love it though that he was doing the homage to Jerry Jeff Walker. I know. That Mr. Awesome. Bojangles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Jeff Walker, another exactly. one of the. Uh, Robert Earl Keane, who's played yeah. at that, that venue. There's I, a lot of them. Yeah, I saw Robert Earl too at Pine Creek. I have that, uh, I have that album Live at the Quarter Horse by uh, Tom Van Zandt. Yeah. We're about with Tom Van Zandt. Yeah. yeah. My friend uh, Paul Clancy named his son Tucker Towns. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm reading a book on, on those songwriters right now. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Do they have any of his work at the library? Um, Towns Van Zandt? No, the, what would you say? They oh, uh, uh, McGuane, yeah. I'm sure yeah, they have a. I'm sure a they do. And I don't know if you know this, but the Livingston Library, I'm a, on the board of the Fresno nice. Library. Um, we're part of a statewide interlibrary loan program, mm. so we can get books from all over the state. 
take two days. It won't cost yeah. anything. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, check it out. It's really good. Absolutely. It's Michelle actually, Boyd is a wonderful person. She is. A lot of the flight and tying materials we're using are from Johnny's collection. Oh, really? I bought it from her. Yeah. Okay. okay. My wife and her are on the links board together. Okay. Advisory board, whatever you're saying. Yeah. Sorry, just no, that's right. pictures of your handiwork. Oh, oh they're okay. not all mine. Okay. Some of your, your guys. Uh, wait, there's a huge, a personal collection of fly fishing books. Huge. I, I mean, it's huge. As it should be in this on community. The, right? uh, <laughs> on the second floor of the library. Okay. Yeah. If you go there, it's a, it's an awesome library because it's one of the few. Carnegie Library. Yeah, Carnegie, not Library. Rockefeller, right. And um, go up there on the second floor and check out that. It's an amazing collection. Okay, I'll yeah. definitely check that yeah. out. That's yeah. awesome. Okay. You know your red wine's good when it's got a piece of peacock curl in it. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> heck yeah. You're going to be tying him in Claret this yeah. week. Elevated grocery store wine. He's, he's yeah. just I'm dying it. it. <laughs> just dying Fishing it. Fishing with bait. <laughs> um, I, I love... Tom McGuain, I think I like him more than Jim Harrison, you know? Well, I don't know, Legends of the Fall, that was so yeah. beautifully written. Yeah, I mean, the poetry he did, and then uh, the yeah. book, The Creature That God Forgot, was really good short stories about yeah. the UP. Yeah. But I still think Tom McGuain, I like Tom McGuain better. Yeah. Did you know they knew each other from college? Uh, I did know that, I, University of Michigan. Yes, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. He said even back then, man, 